Stick around to see how you could win your very own Strongway 3-ton off-road jack just like the one used in this video, courtesy of Northern Tool. Hi, I'm Dylan and I want to go off-roading. Welcome to my 1980-something Toyota truck. Something doesn't sound right. This truck I bought for $150, and I affectionately, with love, of course, named it Stumpy, because it can drive up over stumps, obviously. And I want to take it wheeling today. Let me just knock that out of the way real quick. These trails are nothing. Nothing for old Stump. Oh my gosh. A little deeper than I expected it to be, but it's okay. Stumpy is the ultimate trail rig, as you can tell, being a four speed 22R two wheel drive. It's obviously built to handle these types of trails, off roading, anything you throw at it, it, it can handle it basically with ease, really. And it's honestly the best truck for the job. So, if you want to see something that can actually handle some trails, look no further. Our mascot is the this rooster. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea why it's in here, but it's our mascot for the day, and it's staying with me. It is now my best friend. Briar, you've been replaced. So sorry, it's a tree. Think we can make it out of this tree? Yeah. Oh, that's lower than I thought it was. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Maybe I should roll my window up, I think. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love this truck. You just do whatever you want. Just push stuff out of the way. It's awesome. <laughs> so I just got like smacked across the face on the windshield by a tree. My headlights turned around the wrong way now. And my clutch. Uh oh. The clutch is not working as good as it was before. It's hydraulic, and I'm getting a little worried. Over here. I may have made a mistake. What did I get wedged on? You're burning rubber. I'm burning rubber? Oh. <laughs> well, here's the problem. So a couple years ago, it had like four really good tires on it. Actually, that one right there. And that one doesn't hold air anymore for some reason. I mean, it's only 40 years old. You would think it would still hold air. So we put a street tire on it just to keep going. And what I should have done was take that and put it on that. But I didn't do that. So now we're stuck in the middle of the woods. And the house is really, you can't even see the house anymore. Well, remember what I said about being the ultimate rig? I may have lied. 
Well, that lasted all of uh, maybe five, ten minutes. Briar, we've got a long walk back to the house. Very long walk. Oh, dang. Thankfully, Dixie's going to guide us back there, I hope. Again, I mean, I can't even see it from here. That's how far back in the woods we are. We're not even halfway to the end. So. That was fun. I mean, at least we got to do something for a little bit, but I'm kind of disappointed. I really was hoping to have like the ultimate trail rig at the end of the video and do something with that truck, but unfortunately it just didn't happen. Are we going the right way? That's a great question. Maybe she knows. Well, she's going this <laughs> way. She was like over here. I don't know where we are. We've gotten turned around. It's been three hours. We're lost. I don't know which way to go. I can't tell which direction is anywhere because the sun's not out. I don't know which way north, south, east, or west is. We're lost. It's bad. Please send help. If you see this video, please send someone to find me. Briar, do you have any snacks? Dog. Dixie, come here. Sit still. Come here. Sit still. Sit still. I don't know how we're going to do this. It's literally been a day, and I don't know where we are. It feels like it's been two weeks. I'm lost. There it is. Let's go. Dude, my mom's gonna kill you. You haven't been to school in like a week. What are we doing about Stumpy? This magnificent beast is a 1972 Ford F100 that, believe it or not, was a long bed. Now what had happened was the guys who built this thing took this long bed, cut it down, shortened it, put this wrecker bed on the back. Not only did they do that though, this thing was a six cylinder, three speed on the column, two wheel drive. They took a three quarter ton Dodge put three quarter ton axles in the front and rear, complete with a transfer case, front and rear drive shafts. So this thing has four high, four low, and it will crawl, let me tell you. I know it's ugly, but man, is it super cool. Hello? I just opened it. We've got the mighty, mighty 300 inline six, and it's, well, it's an engine. Now, to my knowledge, this is the original engine. Now, it's kind of janky. This is a radiator out of, I think, a Lexus. You know, it was a cheap radiator and they just slapped it in there. We've got something happening with the brakes. I noticed that this brake line here is not hooked up, so that's good. Uh, we've got a pretty decent battery and, well, that's about it. We've got a lot of things that we had to tackle on this truck so that way we can go rescue our vehicle here. At some point, I would like to have power steering. I've noticed here that they've removed the belt for some reason, but also, look at these welds. This thing was fabricated all to heck. I don't know what's happened here. And the pulley, well, sounds a little crunchy if you ask me. And this radiator, I'm hoping, will hold on. We've already got a split. Oh, you hear that? Listen.
We're bleeding pressure off the radiator already. You know what, we're gonna come back to that. Let's just avoid that for altogether. These tires, well, I think these were the first tires ever made. What? All right then, custom wheels. I have no idea what's happening here. So they took 15 inch wheels. I would assume these are probably the original Ford wheels. They cut the center hub out of the Dodge wheels and welded these onto this wheel. So there's no telling how this thing rides down the road, which if we did ride this thing down the road, we'd be a little bit too brave, I think. So it's all there, but it's just, ugh, you know. And that pinion angle, boy, let me tell you, that's not pretty. The fun stuff is all back here. We've got a big old fashioned boom pole. Look at that. This thing, it works. The winch on the back does things. It makes noises and this cable comes in and out as safe as it possibly could be. We've got hot wires just kind of, wait, maybe that's not the hot wire. Oh, that's the hot wire. I don't know. Some, one of these is hot and it's dangerous. So I think if you do this and then you do, Now it's unwinding. What we probably should do is a, uh, not this. So then you reverse the polarity and it winds it back, right back into place. Look at that. But the most important thing we can do to Big Ugly, add that fresh McCool Auto sticker. Link is down in the description below. Okay, Briar went and got us a fitting and we adapted it to the master cylinder. We're gonna try and fill it up and see if it will do anything. We don't know, because that fitting actually bottomed out. Work the pedal back and forth, we'll see if it does anything. The truck is so crooked that the fluid is at an angle pretty severely. I'm not seeing anything leaking. Yeah. It has a new master cylinder in it. Might just try and bleed everything and see if it works. I'm... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I see something. Oh, yep, there it is on this line that we just fixed. <laughs> so that was pointless. So I guess we are just gonna cut it off and redo it. How's it looking, Briar? He's in the depths right now. It's not actually that bad under here. Not bad. Well, you've got a lot of room to work yeah, with. Go. That's a good thing. You've got, you got plenty of room to deal with stuff under here. It's just a matter of getting a brake line off. Major problem right now is fighting the fact that uh, brake fluid is continuously streaming right next to his head. No luck. Not gonna move. Who decided to put brakes on this thing? No kidding. Also, I've noticed that the uh, cross member has been cut. The original one, they torched it and then just moved it out of the way. Huh. Oh, yeah, I noticed that now. That's good and safe, ain't it? I like that. See that little cut right there? That's uh, good. Oh. Got it? Yeah, I got it, I think. Yeah, it's moving. Sweet. We don't have a shock on this side, but we have a shock on that side. All right, it's loose. Ready to come out. Thank you. Quick driven. Mm. Into socket. Yeah. Oh boy. Please. You ask for so much. This thing's dripping all our brake fluid out. All that precious fluid. Good thing we don't have any. Is it time? Huh? Is it time? No. What are you doing? It's just spinning. Oh gosh. Is there a nut on the other side? If there is, I'm gonna say a lot of bad things. Oh my gosh! There's a nut on the back side. You know what? You're taking the socket with you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Briar said I get to keep the socket. Nice. So this is not a really pretty rendition of what a brake line should look like, but I had it laying around and you know, if it was a nice truck, I'd really care. And uh, since Briar said he's too good to actually make brake lines, I decided I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. And the double flare. And that was a move that made LeBron cry. Vine reference for you. You have no idea what I just no. said. Sorry guys. Show mage. And there you have it. The brake line in place. Briar, see if it'll do anything now. Things are happening. Oh, it just completely emptied it, so it was getting fluid. Okay. And guess what? We're out, completely, no fluid. So we're trying to sort out the brakes, and uh, well, this is a problem. The radiator that's in this car 
is I believe from like some Japanese car, like a Lexus or something, and I can't find the radiator cap. It's just been kind of tossed in here just to make it work. But something else is wrong. These are transmission coolant lines. We believe that the radiator's been put in upside down, folks. So I walked back here because I know that the radiator that was in the truck is in the bed. That's a Dodge radiator. It's got a Pentastar right there. What the heck? So I guess this radiator came out of where the three quarter ton axles and stuff came from. So if we can find a radiator that's close to this, I think we can make it work. So we're back at the old barn here with all the storage stuff in it. We've got a pile of radiators. We're just digging through here to see what we can find. No luck yet. I mean, we see some that I think the cores are going to be too wide on some of these. So we're going to have to keep looking. But I think we can find something here in just a minute. I'm going to dig through all these, check the measurements, compare it to the old one, and just see how it stacks up. And hopefully we can find something to work. Well, I think I found a good radiator. So first and foremost, we got to get this old one out. Whoa! Oh, well, that's straight water. It's a good thing we saw that before it froze again. That could have been unfortunate. We're supposed to be getting some freezing weather here in the next few days. Ooh, we've been in for a treat. This radiator here is just simply zip tied in. Hey, no harm, no foul. I've done it myself. Hopefully, it lifts right out. That is a baby radiator. But yeah, it was upside down. As you can see, there's the cooling ports for the transmission. So it should have been like this. I have no idea where this radiator came from. I found it in the barn. We're gonna see if it'll fit. The cool thing about this one is that the water necks line up. So it's pretty much what we're going with. It's supposed to be a reman radiator. It's got a sticker on it. Let's hope that's true. Let's wiggle on down in there, my man. There you go. Well, folks, I hate to say it, but I'm actually kind of proud of this install here. It is zip tied in some places, but we did manage to get a bolt and a nut on one of them. And the radiator hoses are good. I mean, it's a pretty sharp, turn right there but i think it'll work and i mean i hope it does something we had to plug this port right here and uh, the fan clears no interference there so we're gonna fill it back up with coolant and see if it'll run we backed it outside and uh, filled it up with coolant everything seems like it's good no leaks i mean it's sitting here and actually we got brake pressure somehow and uh, it'll actually kind of halfway stop itself but as it's running the whole grill fender bumper area is rattling so it really just sounds like a diesel now So basically, this is my Ford diesel. Welcome. Is this coming swapped? Yes. Yes, coming swapped. Still running. Let me take the parking brake off real quick. They made like a little saw blade thing right here. Look at that on the dash. So you can set the parking brake. Now <laughs> the brake's off. How goofy is that? I love it. <laughs> no more. Oh. I mean, it kind of stopped itself already. Just because it's in such a low gear. One of these sides over here is stopping me. I can feel it. Get a little speed up. Yeah, you see it tried. I, I guess it's that one right there is working because it tried to pull the steering wheel to the right. See it? <laughs> it's really trying to stop me. Oh, it will. If you pump it up, it'll actually stop you. Do our test run. I think it's worthy now. Let's do it. We gotta see if we can make it all the way back through there. We got out and locked the hubs. Think skinny.
<laughs> what do you think about that? She's pretty trail capable, don't you think? That was pretty good. We flexed it. The, the hard part right now is that there is not enough RPM. You really got to be working the clutch and the throttle pretty hard. My left foot is hurting just from that little stint right there, but it made it through pretty good. Hey, the temp gauge is working. Oh, good. It's just now starting to warm up a little bit. I've got a dirt pile right behind the house. Let's see if I can just climb up it a little bit. I think I'm cooking the clutch. Go baby, go. Okay, that might be too much for this thing, but it was cool at least. Leave her there. <laughs> Where was I spinning at? When you were over there, the front tire, well, this side wasn't spinning at all. Was it not? Oh, I just shoved the bumper up in that, didn't I? That works pretty good. You shove the bumper up into the dirt mound, and it'll stop the truck. Well, an attempt was made. Yeah, I just spun. That, that sucker just doesn't have a, it needs a locker in the rear. Heck, we might, is it spinning just one wheel briar in the back? Or do you know? Uh, my side was spinning, I don't know about this side. So it's probably, well that and the tires. This one right here is as bald as it can get. There's zero tread left, so that's not gonna be helping. We need a locker, we need some tread, and some better tire. Oh gosh, I even shoved it up into the frame. That's how hard I stuffed it. But it was cool, it was well worth it. I think we could crawl up that if we had some lockers here. Let me unlodge this thing from the earth. Ooh, doesn't sound very good, does it? It's okay, buddy, just go when you wanna. Yeah, the brakes are good. All right, up and over. Oh, don't fail me left, do not fail me. Come on. Yeah. I'm gonna roll the window up. A lot of trees. Oh no, my mirror. Don't do it. Oh, that's barely clearing. I just skirted the mirror. like a professional. Oh, don't die on me now. <laughs> this is so much fun. Brakes? Nope, nope. There they are. All right, it's official. I love this truck. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> well look, Briar has become one with the truck. Congratulations, you're stuck. You have to stay there now and move the truck by yourself. That's kind of rough. So anyway, we're up under the truck because the rear end is actually open. And that's boring, especially when you're trying to go off road. So Briar has taken all the bolts out of the diff cover. We're gonna see what it looks like, see if it even has any fluid in it at all. It's got some RTV looks like, but uh, I'm gonna make an attempt to weld it. Yeah, it's bone dry. <laughs> well, that's great. So I started doing a little digging on this rear end and I found out based on the stampings and markings, it is from a 1960 Dodge, which is insane to me. It's a Dana 60, but it is from a 1960 Dodge based on the casting date or the stamp marks to tell you when the production date was. And on top of that, they are 488 gears. That is fantastic. So this thing ought to crawl pretty good. Problem is, spinning that one forward, this one goes backwards, whole rear end's open and that's not conducive to wheeling. So we're gonna weld it up. Now the right way to do this is to put a locker in it and actually make it perform properly. 
or do something along those lines. The thing is, look how worn out this thing is. She got a lot of miles on her, so we're just gonna go ahead and do away with all that, weld it up, and that should fix all our problems. All the gears are clean, so I took this little piece of cardboard and I stuck it in between the spider gears to get it to where it fit perfectly in there. And I made this little plate. Now this will stick right in here. It's eighth inch, and that way I'm not just trusting my welding. That way I'm not just trusting my welding skills to hold this thing together. We've actually got some plating here to hold it me strong. There you go folks, welds are done. I am no welder, I just play one on TV. But that should hold it. Now look what we do. I'm gonna push this one forward. Huh? Huh? Everything's working. So we're gonna let that cool. Everything harden up real good. We'll put the diff cover back on and then we will fill it up with gear oil and hope that this thing doesn't explode. All right, the diff cover's back on. We're gonna let that RTV dry, and in the meantime, we've got some tires planned for this thing. As you can see, these suckers are bald. They don't do nothing, and they just spin in any kind of mud or anything loose, so we got a fix for that. Briar's gonna pop them off real quick, and we'll take all four with us. Well, here's our old knobbies. They look terrible. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, this isn't even the worst one, believe it or not. I'm surprised, but uh, they do hold air because they have tubes in them, so that's the only reason these things are actually functioning but they're just not good enough. I mean, they're pretty much all slick, so that's where this enters. We've got some Goodyear Wranglers. Now, these are nowhere near as aggressive as these tires used to be, but they will work because they'll hold air and they actually have a little bit more tread. And there they are. Boy, do they look good. We've actually got some tread to work with now. They're not the most aggressive, but they're definitely better than what we were working with. And heck, gosh, it makes it look tough with them white letters. Now, before we hit this journey, we have to pack the essentials, and that includes this Strongway three-ton off-road jack courtesy of Northern Tool. Now, this thing is capable of so much. I mean, it's such a sturdy foundation with these giant wheels. It's got a nice flat pad so you can pick up something with confidence and know it's not going to sink in the mud. You're not going to have issues or feel unsafe when you're jacking up something out in the middle of the woods, mud, dirt, whatever it is, you name it, this thing can probably handle it. And if you want to win this jack, it's as simple as it gets. All you have to do, like this video, make sure you're subscribed to my channel with notifications, and comment down below and tell me that you accomplished these things and you're automatically entered to win. And this Saturday, February 17th at 5 p.m. Central, we're gonna go live on the channel and we're going to announce the winner. So make sure you're here for that. You'll have 48 hours to claim the prize and send me an address to get it to, and Northern Tool will send you a brand new jack free of charge. So make sure you enter now, and thank you, Northern Tool, for sponsoring the channel. Big Ugly's ready for the trail. <laughs> Not a third gear. We're still in four low, don't forget that. <laughs> That's about the easiest way to drive it because you put it in four high. Oh. Never mind, we're not putting it in four high. I 
and get out and walk faster. Tesla thought they had the first auto driver. No. These people did. trail. I'm nervous to go back, but we've got to rescue Stumpy. It's the only way. stumpy is so it's kind of harder to get through some of these trails and some of these like obstacles but the good thing is we have 488 gears a locker rear end and four low so that really does help us out in the long run so if stumpy can make it through here ugly can too Six hours. We've gone 27 miles. I'm getting worried. I don't know where Thumpy could be. I mean, we we combed every bit of this land that I can tell, and I I don't, I don't know where he's at. Wait a minute. Is that him?
to do that. this cable's long enough but we've made it at least to stumpy here which I can back up a little further if needed the main thing is we're just gonna see if we can pull him out of here real fast is that all it's got That's all it's got hmm. well, I guess I got to get a little closer don't I Well, as soon as we went to hook up the cable on the winch, it immediately pulled right out of the pulley. As you can see, it has decided to give up. Now, I'm having to do this alone now. Uh, Briar was attacked by coyotes. We've lost him, and I don't know if I'll ever see him again. So I have to go it alone and get out of here in his honor. We're not gonna quit. Not yet. Already got some battle scars. Uh, the cable whipped around and uh, got me right on the nose. So cut me here, cut me here. Thankfully I can move the shifter while oh, it's not running. Let's we'll see if this winch will pull it out now. Oh, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Go. Oh, yeah, yes, it worked. Briar, I'm you're alive. alive. Yes, I am. What happened? The coyotes got you, then what? I slept really late. You <laughs> Wait, so you went home? Uh, I didn't tell you, I'm sorry. You mean to tell me I've been out here by myself this whole time? My mom was mad. I had to stay. We got the strong way jack over here. We're going to see if we can figure out the clutch issue before we go any further, just to see if it's able to drive out of here. Dang, that's a good jack, ain't it? Wow, didn't even bury itself. Picked the whole truck up without even having a trouble. Well, after further inspection, we realized that we have uh, blown the clutch line going down from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder, and, well, we're stuck. So, looks like we are having to pull this thing out of here. But thankfully, our strong weight jack was able to pick it up so I can get up under there. And I was able to clear out some stuff underneath it at the same time. So, hopefully, it'll be a little bit easier to pull this thing out of here. But all I know to do is just go on forward with Ugly and get this thing out of here.
chandelier. Soaking wet. The rain is persistent. the tree just don't break the windshield just out of the way please thank you oh hopefully it doesn't kill this briar there oh wow It can move, but man, it's just a little too wide to be fit between some of these trees like that Toyota can. So I'm just glad it was able to get back to it and pull it out of there. Whew. Gosh. fully let out of the clutch in low gear and it'll just crawl I mean, we're idling and it's just pulling out of here you don't have to worry about you know working with the pedals you just crawl and make your way out of here just safe and sound take your time don't get in a hurry things go better when you don't do that ow dang i roll my window up and i can't see nothing drenched by a garden hose from the sky. Woo! That's an eye poker. I love this truck. This is so much fun. And I can see the end. It's just right there. But this is the hardest part of the trail where we have to maneuver and weave into this really deep ditch. Ooh, I hope Briar's ready. The rain has gotten a lot worse. I think it's about to get bumpy too. As hard as this is, and as hard as it's been, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. This is so much fun. I have had a blast getting this truck ready and getting it out of here. And now I know if something ever gets stuck, I feel like we're pretty capable to move it. That's the great part. Thankfully, the rain's coming right at the very end, at the very worst part. Great.
I can see the exit. It's right there. Huh. This has been one heck of a recovery, I'll tell you that much, folks. Now all we gotta do is just squeeze past some of this stuff in the road and we're out of here. Five gallon drum. What a truck, guys. This has been an awesome experience getting this thing going and getting it to where it can be used. I don't want to stop using this thing. It's been so much fun to actually go out and do some wheeling. And that trail was nothing in comparison to what this truck could actually handle. So I really want to do some serious off-road with this thing. Wow, has it been fun. Whew. I'm having, honestly, the most fun I've had in a long time. And it's with a cheapo Ford four-wheel drive. I mean, who would have imagined? And I'll tell you right now, you guys probably saw the 74 Ford that we did the same kind of route with uh, last year really this truck is way more capable by far a thousand times more capable and I, I just love this thing because it's it's bare bones it's super basic and it doesn't really need much to be a good truck and it gave us zero issues mechanically once we've sorted out all the problems with it, it it's been perfect I, I love this truck Well, folks, Stumpy, he's alive. He's wounded, he's hurt, he's beat up, but he's alive. And he's made it back in the shop so we can do the necessary repairs. All thanks to our good friend, Big Ugly. The 1972 Ford F100 converted to a three-quarter ton has saved the day. And I've also got to thank the Strongway three-ton jack so we were able to actually check the thing out and see exactly what was wrong. Again, do not miss out. If you want that giveaway, go down into the description below, hit the link so you can check the thing out like the video, subscribe, leave the comment that says thank you Northern Tool and you'll be entered to win. So now for the rest of the truck, what are we gonna do? I say we go off-roading in some serious trails. The trail we did today was basically a walk in the park. Big Ugly can handle that all day long. That was just like, you know, he was taking a nap the whole time we were driving. I think we need get the engine running a little bit better, get the brakes working, better tires all the way around, get this thing to where it is solid and drivable and we're going to hit some serious trails. So if you have any recommendations on where to go and what to do, please leave a comment down below. And with that guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.